before you an example of deceased humanity a dead body in the early 1800s we have problems in actually acquiring cadavers for experimental purposes dead bodies which we need to anatomize so that we can determine how the body works so that we can then make you look better if you're ill this was a great problem where were we going to get the dead bodies from well we were allowed four bodies a year to our school of anatomy however four bodies a year they don't go a long way do they particularly in the summer when they will rot so the winter time really was the time for anatomizing the bodies now where i worked in scotland at the school of uh, surgery just down the road from the school we had a private school of anatomy run by a man known as dr knox and dr knox for some reason we would find out later he never had any problem whatsoever in acquiring dead bodies in the early part of 1825 then they were getting pretty short even for dr knox and the only bodies that could be found were rotting from the graveyard they were being acquired by men known as the resurrection men body snatchers and two of the most famous were William Burke and William Hare and they started by finding bodies that they'd already identified as being ill they would invite them into their boarding house and as they died they would pass the bodies on to Dr Knox in many cases they were put into herring barrels and rolled through the city of Edinburgh back to Dr Knox's anatomy school and then they took to grave robbing they would wait until the grave was sealed in and the next night on a dark moonless night was ideal then they would set to with their wooden spades so that they didn't make a noise on the earth and they would dig up the bodies of the recently deceased ooh. you may ooh, sir. and then they were taken to Knox's anatomy school and cut up in a public dissection anybody could go and see them. and then of course they found they were getting very well paid for this but people started to get onto the onto the body snatchers and what they would do is put mort safes big iron cages over the top of the graves so that the dead bodies could not be dug up these cages would be rented for two weeks by which time the bodies were unusable they were rotted in the grave there they couldn't use them for dissection purposes so Burke and Hare took to murder and they formed a particular way of murdering people by placing their one hand over their mouth and nose and the other one around the throat and twisting the head back it was called burking so there was no damage to the body itself the body was pristine and they killed over 20 people using that method burking eventually a surgeon called Liston Robert Liston was in to see one of these dissections and the body of a woman was brought in her name was Mary Kelly and she was said to have died several days before of fever well Robert Liston knew different he'd been talking to her that very morning he knew that she'd been murdered and he then told the authorities that Burke and Hare were responsible for the murder they were arrested William Hare turned King's evidence and said he'd done it and pointed at William Burke William Burke was then condemned to hang and to be dissected himself and his skeleton was then hung 
in a cupboard in the School of Anatomy in Edinburgh. And it is still there. Today, we are going to do an autopsy on a body that has been recently exhumed from a grave. It is only about two days old. And we are going to attempt to find out whether this poor individual had been buried as dead or whether, as was many cases, he was buried pre-mortis. In other words, exhibiting the effects of being dead, but not quite dead. This was a case that happened frequently. And when bodies were exhumed, scratch marks were to be found on the underside of the coffins, buried alive. Now, if I may just pass over here so that I can just take my scalpel, we will begin the post-mortem. This individual, as I said, died through disease. We believe that he had passed away naturally. We're going to attempt by examining him whether he did or not. What I would say is if anything untoward happens, please do not hang about in here. We will begin by opening the chest cavity, like so, by placing the knife in and down through the cavity, exposing the ribs inside. I'm now going to reach inside to incise the, yes, I can see the heart, and by opening the heart slightly, the two ventricles there are visible. I will now remove the heart, and there seems to be something rather wrong with this here. This heart is still beating. I'm alive! He's alive! Oh, run! 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 Quickly! His heart! No! Run! I would not hang about in this place if I were you for dead as a woodcan! You're not supposed to laugh, it's horrible! It's hilarious! It's hilarious! It's supposed to be dreamt to make a walk with children and animals! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The bit about Birkin Hare was true. The bit about our friend here being buried alive, not, not quite so true. As these very perceptive people on the front know about it. Thank you, Corpse! There we are. Thank you very much. We're back here again at one o'clock for a very similar job. Thank you. We're here all weekend.